and they actually formulated a religion that they called the religion of humanity. They actually invented a religion from their own self. It's upon us as Muslims that we protect na'am, our belief, that we protect our intellects, that we protect ourselves <coughs> against these ideologies of disbelief that are being spread. And the only way to do this, Allah, is to stick to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said ثم جعلناك على شريعة من الأمر فاتبعها ولا تتبع أهواء الذين لا يعلمون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then we put you Muhammad on a sharia a legislated path revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na'am because, as Allah Azza wa said in the Quran, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِأَحْكَمِ الْحَاكِمِينَ Is not Allah the best of judges? No doubt Allah is the best of judges, the most wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, We have placed you, Muhammad, upon a sharia, a divine legislation that came from Allah Azza wa Jal, revelation from Allah. And Allah is the best of judges. Allah is Al-Hakim. The most wise. Allah Azza wa Jalla is Al Alim, the All Knowing. And Allah commanded the Prophet وسلم, and follow this Sharia, ah, follow this divine law, and do not follow the desires of those who know not. Allah Akbar. That is why in our time, the Muslim has to be firm in his belief. In our time, the Muslim cannot compromise about the fundamentals of the religion. Let's take an example. And after I mention this example, I want to read and share with the brothers some of the words of an Imam Ibn Al Qayyim rahimahullah, concerning fi dambil hawa, condemnation of desires and lusts. If we were to take the example of alcohol, khamar, right? And we know الدين مبني على المصالح في جلبها والدرء للقبائح The religion of Islam is built upon weighing the benefits against the harms. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what He commands with is that which is beneficial, either totally beneficial in itself or beneficial as a whole and anything Allah Azza wa prohibits is either totally evil and harmful or generally harmful as a whole so let's take an example the exact example of khamar alcohol Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said yas'alunaka anil khamri wal they ask you about alcohol and they ask you about about gambling Say that the sin and the harms of alcohol and gambling is great. But there are a limited number of benefits. But the sin and the evil and the harm of these two things outweigh any amount of good that may be present. <coughs> if somebody was to come today, a philosopher, whoever they are, and they were to say and they were to argue, and they were to say alcohol is beneficial. Alcohol is beneficial and it is something that is good and it's something that is fine and it's lawful it's a statement of disbelief why because you that is rejection of the ruling of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's kufr total disbelief because that individual he's saying 
whether they acknowledge it or not, I know better what is beneficial for mankind and what is harmful for mankind. So that's why we have to understand this battle between truth and falsehood. The Prophet ﷺ, when he was sent with the greatest of fundamentals to him, <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him to proclaim to the polytheists of the Arab and the non-Arab. And remember, the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Allah Azza despised all of them. Arabahum wa ajamuhum. The Arab of the, of the earth and the non-Arab of the earth. Illa baqai min ahli kitab except for remnants of the people of the book. That was before the sending of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent, he was sent with the message of Allah Azawajal, which to, was to worship Allah alone, at tawheed <coughs> without any partners, and to shun all forms of shirk. Shirk of the heart, shirk of the tongue, shirk of the limbs to abandon all forms of shirk. <clears throat> he never came with this idea of liberalism. You can believe what you want. <clears throat> and even those who say that they are liberalists, as we explained before, they do not practice this. And the proof of that, if you disagree with something, even theologically, and you say, listen, I reject violence. We can live together in peace and harmony and we can respect one another. But if you say, for example, something that they promote and they hold to be sacred, and you say, I don't accept that because I'm a Muslim, look how they would try and demonize you in the media or demonize you with regards to your reputation and your name. So that's why it's important, brothers and sisters, to understand this concept of dhamm al-hawa, condemnation of desires. Anything that goes against Quran and Sunnah, the Muslim cannot accept it. And Imam Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, has a whole chapter concerning what? Fi dhamm al-hawa, and we will select, inshallah ta'ala, some parts of this so that we can relate it to the lecture that we're speaking at at this moment in time. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and he mentions this as al-Tasi Ashab, the 19th point, he said, to know anna shaytan, to know that the devil does not have any point of entrance upon the son of Adam, illa min babi hawa, except from the avenue of their lusts and their desires. And that's the danger of al-Hawa. And that is why the people of falsehood, they try and misguide people, utilizing what? Utilizing lusts and desires. And he also mentioned, he said, Al-Ishroon, Anna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ja'al al-Hawa. Allah azawajal subhanahu wa ta'ala has made lusts, immoral lusts and desires totally opposite to what he sent. His messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with. وَقَسَّمَ النَّاسِ إِلَىٰ قِسْمِينَ And Allah Azawajal divided mankind into two camps. There are two camps. You can't sit on the fence. He said, وَقَسَّمَ النَّاسِ إِلَىٰ قِسْمِينَ أَتْبَعِ الْوَحِي You have followers of revelation. وَأَتْبَعِ الْهَوَىٰ And followers of lusts and desires. We believe the philosophers when they promote what opposes the Qur'an and the Sunnah, following the Hawa. That's something we have to be firm upon and we cannot compromise as it relates to that. وَهَذَا كَثِيرٌ فِي الْقُرْآنِ If a person was to read the Qur'an, they would find this in many places. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُ لَكْ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ If they do not respond, and answer you, they know that they only follow their desires. And Allah Azza subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَلَئِنِ اتَّبَعْتَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ بَعْدَ الَّذِي جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ 
Likewise, and Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, concerning Al-Hawa, look, he said Al-Hawa, immoral lusts and desires, and the Tawheed wa Tiba' Al-Hawa mutabadan. Tawheed, Tawheed and Hawa, following immoral lusts and desires, he said they are total opposites. Look how it goes back to Tawheed. That's why this is about safeguarding a Tawheed. May Allah Azza wa Jalla bless us to die upon a Tawheed and the Sunnah. He said, فَإِنَّ الْهَوَى صَنَمْ Because lusts and desires, they are an idol. Al-Hawa is an idol. وَلِكُلِّ عَبْدٍ صَنَمْ فِي قَلْبِي بِحَسْبِ هَوَى And every servant you will find that they will have in their heart an idol depending upon their level of their immorality and their indecent lusts and desires. وَإِنَّمَا بَعَثَ اللَّهُ رُسُلَهُ بِكَسْرِ الْأَسْنَامِ Allah sent the messengers to annihilate and break these idols. So yes, there are idols that people worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Muslims <coughs> and this can not be changed it's a historical fact when the Muslims had the ability the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the leader of the Muslims he commanded that the idols be broken. But likewise the, as Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala also Allah azza wa jalla wa ta'ala sent the messengers to destroy the idols that are present in the hearts of the people. Allah Akbar. And he sent the messengers so that Allah Azawajal is worshipped alone without any partners. وَلَيْسَ مُرَادُ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ كَسْرَ الْأَسْنَامَ الْمُجَسَّدَ وَتَرْكَ الْأَسْنَامَ الَّتِي فِي الْقَلْبِ Allah Taala did not only want that the physical idols be broken, but the idols that are in the heart remain. No, Allah Taala, He wanted for the idols, the physical idols, to be broken along with the idols that exist in the heart of the human being. He said, بَلِ الْمُرَادِ كَسْرُهَا مِنَ الْقَلْبِ أَوَّلًا the intent was for the idols in the heart to be broken first and then later on the idols that actually existed. Yes, if you look at the biography of the Prophet وسلم, when the Prophet وسلم, was sent with the message of Allah, the message of God, there were idols in the Kaaba. And the Prophet وسلم, at that time in Mecca and the Sahaba, they did not have any ability to change that. However, the idols were broken in the hearts of the believers. The Prophet وسلم, taught the believers that which was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it destroyed the idols that may have existed prior to that in the hearts and in the minds. Al-Imam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, قال al-Hasan ibn Ali, al-Mutawwi'i, sanamu kulli insanin hawa, the idol of every person is their lusts and their designs. فَمَنْ كَسَرَهُ بِالْمُخَالَفَةَ So, the one who conquers them, conquers them by opposing their lusts and their designs. And then he, Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentioned other things. And he mentioned the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, أَرَأَيْتَ مَنْ اتَّخَذَ إِلَّهُ هَوَاهُ أَفَأَنْتَ تَكُونُ عَلَيْهِ وَكِيلًا Have you Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seen him who has taken his ilah, his God, to be his own designs? Would you be a wakil over him? In addition to that, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he mentions again, so we, we've established that 
the liberals, who we said at times are not very liberal, rather we see manifestations of intolerance from them, we've established that they take their lusts and their desires to be gods, false deities. And we've mentioned that around their lusts and desires, they have allegiance and also they hate depending upon what? Upon their hawa. Ibn al Qayyim mentioned the same thing. He said, Anna asl al adawa wa sharq wa al al waqi'u bayna al nas min ittiba' al hawa. He said, The enmity and the evil and the jealousy that appears between the people, it is because they follow desires and immoral lusts. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, somebody may say, well, okay, we live in this time, we're living in this era, what do we do? How do we safeguard our religion, which is Rasul Man, which is the most important thing that we possess, more important than food and drink and the, even the air that we breathe? How do we protect our religion? How do we protect our hearts? How do we protect our intellect? from being corrupted by immoral messages, then the answer is that firstly we must learn our religion. We must learn our religion based upon the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the companions. Likewise, we have to implement it. But at the same time, we have to be firm and adamant upon it. To the extent that, even in the face, and look at the Prophet Sallallahu and we said this is a matter of Tawheed. Ibn Qayyim, he said, Rahimahullah, he said this is a matter of Tawheed. And that Tawheed and following <coughs> lusts and desires and opinions that have been developed by men, they are two opposites that can ne never be gathered together. The Prophet Sallallahu remember prior to him being sent by Allah with the message of God, the message of Allah the people they used to describe him, describe him, him as Muhammad the trustworthy one, Muhammad the honorable one. He had an excellent reputation amongst the people, all of the people. But when Allah commanded him, Fasta, openly convey what you are being commanded, command the people to worship Allah alone, warn them against shit. In a short period of time now, they started to what? To abuse him and malign his character and slander him and mock him. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he remained firm. Are we going to remain firm, brothers and sisters, at this time? And the same methods that the people of falsehood of old, they tried to utilize against the Prophet Sallallahu and the same methods that are being used today. It's just different names, different people, Naam, and maybe they refer to these things with different titles and different names. When the Prophet Sallallahu when they recognized that the Prophet Sallallahu his da'wah, Allah Azza was blessing his call and people were accepting it. Yes, because look, Alhamdulillah, the Muslims, we are not a violent people. That's a myth that they try to make stick. However, look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was in Mecca, he was calling the people to La ilaha illallah. The companions and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they tried to worship at the Haram. And they were the ones being persecuted like what we find in the world today, Rohingya, the Muslims, uh, genocide in Rohingya. You have mass concentration camps in China, the situation in India. What's going to change the situation of the Muslims? The same thing that's going to change it is not everyone going, anyone can demonstrate. The madman, the immoral man, anyone can demonstrate. What's going to change our state is what changed the state of the first generation meaning to heed and sunnah remaining firm upon that. When they came to the Prophet and they said to the Prophet, 
when the Quraysh had tried various methods to stop the da'wah of the Prophet وسلم, and they accused him of being a poet and that failed, they accused him of being a liar, that failed now they tried to threaten him and his well-being, that failed they physically harmed him, that failed they gathered him and they made him an offer they offered him money, they offered him women they offered him treatment because they said if, it's, if you have an illness, illness we will find the best doctor for you. The Prophet ﷺ rejected all of that. The problem today with many of the Muslims, illa man rahim Allah, you go to them and you say, you have to accept this. And there's a lot of pressure. How many people are standing up firm and saying, you know what, I don't accept this. This is haram. Allah said in the Quran, kada. You ask them about a question, what do you say about covering? Allah has commanded the Muslim woman to cover. I can't change that. What do you say about zina, fornication? A zina is haram. Allah Azza wa Jal, Subhanahu wa Taala, He forbade it. It's clear, and the list could go on and on. How many people do you find, even from those who say that they are Islamic speakers and Islamic callers, stand firm upon the religion of Allah Azza wa Jal? So as regular Muslims, no one can say. You can't say. You know, well, you know, I, I'm following that particular individual and wherever they take me I'm going to go with them no alhamdulillah we hope that Allah Azza blesses the youth and blesses Ahl al-Islam that from amongst us there will be those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes revivers of the religion that stand firm no matter of the amount of intimidation that they meet along the way now and they, they use like we said wealth they'll come to you it's about money they'll come to you <coughs> Or it's about you know citizenship or they'll come to you it's about this and it's about that sadly some people they they will try and rewrite and redefine the religion based upon what's acceptable and you find this is a practice among some that the religion to them is what suits their lifestyle and that's a major mistake the religion is not what suitable what is suitable for my lifestyle the religion is what Allah has revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah said in the Quran, that they have shuraka partners that legislated for them things of the religion that Allah really gave no permission for. And Ikhwan, this is something as well that's plaguing even some organizations. Even so, in the West, you have organizations that say that we are mainstream Muslim organizations, but look at some of the things that they're trying to promote. And some of the things that they are trying to align themselves with, you see clearly it goes against, against the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And these liberalists, they know it. But what do they do? They say, you know what? And may Allah grant us all firmness. They say as human beings, we know that the nature of man, that they are weak. Allah as really says in the Quran, man was created weak. And there's no strength except with Allah as well. If we want to send these Muslims astray, if we want these Muslims to water down their religion, if we want to feed them this ideology of disbelief, we have to pick from amongst them some leaders who may have been respected, but we have to bring them to our wavelength and our way of thinking, and they will do the job for us. And we're seeing it now. And the only people, and this is in every time, that they know that they cannot divert from the path of Allah Azza wa Jal a sirat al-mustaqeem is Ahl sunnah the people of the sunnah in every day and age that's why look if you look at the orientalist teachings with the, the, in the various universities those who study Islam from the academics the non-Muslims when they look at Ahl sunnah like for example you read about an Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah the non-Muslims the mustashriqoon they say that Barbahari was a fanatic with Iyad Billah. Why? Because they said that his, he had an, the, and they also they demonized the Hanabila, those who follow the methodology and the Aqidah of Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal rahimahullah. Because it's known that the Hanabila, many of them were firm upon Quran and Sunnah. So they say that these individuals, they were fanatics. But as for the Sufi, the, the Sufis, they are wonderful people. <laughs> huh? why, why is that? Why are the Sufis, you know, Rumi, you know, and others? 
I read a book, subhanAllah, and I don't want any of the brothers, I'm not going to mention the title, and again, <laughs> what I read, is written by a person that ascribes to the religion of Islam. And he used to be an extremist. That's, that's another per group of people that they use. They say, you know, this individual, he was extreme. You know, at one point in time, he was a member of Hizb tahrir and he was locked up in Egypt, and he knows about radicalization, and he knows about extremism. He was a sellout then. He didn't understand the religion then, like he doesn't understand the religion now. But he's their Trojan horse, right? So they bring a person like that, and he'll write books about Islam. You know, and it, like the, the, the right or the left, depending upon which spectrum you fall, you know, they will promote this type of person, and he's on BBC and, you know, Fox News or various stations and channels. I, it was a book I read. When I read the book, it was about, you know, defining the correct religion of Islam. Sorry, I, I think, I, actually, I think I was coming to the UK, I, I was going back to America, it was one of the two. I said, let me see how these people are trying to misguide the Muslims using these people. And subhanAllah, I read the book, Wallahi, alladhi la ilaha illa huwa. This individual who says, says that he's a Muslim, he was praising the extreme Sufis, right? And the reason why he was saying that because, you know, they allow khamar, they allow people to drink. They allow this, you know, they have all type, you know, they don't care about shit. The, they, the reason why the Sufis will be loved him because they allow everything. What deen do you have if you allow everything? But again, it goes back to that concept of what liberalism. <coughs> and liberalism, we say to them, if you are really liberal, liberalism is what? You are freedom to choose, you are free to choose what you want to choose. Then leave me be free to establish my religion. Leave me be free to establish my religion and respect that as long as we live together in peace and harmony. You do not harm me and I will not harm you. And if religiously we disagree with one another, one another or theologically, let it be a battle of truth and falsehood and see who is victorious. But they know that they have nothing that can go against the religion of Islam. Can't stand with it. That's why the truth has come and falsehood will always disappear. So, Ikhwan, I don't want to go on too long because I know my space was short. There's a lot that could be said. And this was the... My lecture was going to be concerning this, but in more detail. It's important that we raise our children, teach them what actually liberalism, hyper-liberalism hyper is. What they are being taught in the school is not really liberalism. It's a religion. And they are being taught to worship their desires. And that path, it can lead a person to apostasy and reject the religion of Islam. May Allah Azza protect us from that. And that's sadly why some Muslim children who are not educated about the religion of Islam, if you send them to these type of environments, and when they go to school or they go to college, and they're bombarded on a daily basis, but they don't have any understanding of Islam, they're not confident in their Islamic identity, they're easy targets. We need to teach them what is correct, the correct belief, the correct position, and the futility of that which opposes it, so that they are able to deal with these doubts. Because Alhamdulillah, yes, even for example, an atheist, when it comes, because even some atheists, their religion is science. Their religion, that's a deen, they, are, they worship science. Because to them science, even though it's based time on times, at times on theories, that's their religion. For a Muslim, alhamdulillah, when we study, for example, you study this, the, uh, the biology of the human cell, the different be difference between the prokaryotic cell and the eukaryotic cell, and you look at the cell of the human body and you see how Allah Azzawajal has designed the cell with the various, you know, the, 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 the nucleus and the DNA and the mitochondria and the Krebs cycle and all of these laws, even in the cell. For me, when I studied in university, alhamdulillah, it increased my iman. It was like, subhanAllah, this is amazing. Look at that, look at these laws and look at these patterns and how, you know, the mitochondria is the, 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 the engine of the cell and how energy, you know, is produced and so on and so forth by what Allah has, has decreed. And it was like, subhanAllah, the creation of Allah is amazing. But the atheist, you know, to him it just, you know, he thinks that he's so intelligent and smart and he still doesn't have basic answers. <laughs> But again, Ikhwan, it's important that we, what? we teach ourselves and our children to be confident with their Islamic belief, with their Islamic identity, 
and not intimidating. And other people, if you look, in America you have the evangelical Christians. The evangelical Christians, they're no doubt, they're non-Muslims. And they're upon shirk. But they stand up, when you ask them about certain issues that are taking place today, they'll say, we don't accept that. That goes against our religion. And we as Muslims, we can't do the same as that when it comes to our religion, which is the religion of Allah Azawajal. In the deen, in the Allah, in Islam, the religion with Allah Azawajal is al-Islam. وَمَنْ يَرْتَغِي غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ وَهُوْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Whoever desires a religion other than the religion of Islam, it will never be accepted from them and in the hereafter they're from the losers. We have the deen of Allah. We don't have the courage to do that. Subhanallah. And when they challenge us, yes, we try and we stand firm. We don't agree with that. We won't accept that. Not that when you, you're on a radio program, like Mufti Mink, when they asked him, and I said this before and I re I'll repeat it, when they asked him, what do you say about such and such? What if they choose to be? That's up to them. What answer is that? What do you? <laughs> what answer is that? Just because you want to visit that country in Europe, you want to be off the extremist list, so you're willing to compromise your religion? May Allah grant, grant us all firmness. But Ikhwan, this, I'm telling you, this battle is long, and I, I heard a clip of Sheikh Salah al-Sheikh and he was talking about the battle between you know, Ahl al-Islam and the, the Freemasons and liberalism and these type of things. He said they're not interested in this idea what they try and say, you know, safety and peace and security and respecting one another. He said no, rather they want to replace our belief. They, well, some of them, they want to replace they, it's not that, alhamdulillah, you look the way that you look. You know, you believe what you believe. No, they want, they want to say, you believe what we believe. You must look how we look. Now, you must accept what we accept. You must state to be moral what we say is moral. You must say what, that this is immoral if we hold it to be immoral. That's not liberalism in any <laughs> Or rather, that's dictatorship. Why? Because it goes back to their being. And another danger, Ikhwan, is what? Another trap. If the people take rappers and actors and these so-called stars to be their role models, they're going to lead you, billah, many times right to the hellfire. How many of them stand for nothing? How many of them have said things and because of the pressure from the media, even if they believe it to be wrong, they'll come out, I'm very sorry I said that. They don't believe in the fact, hypocrisy. But they're scared because they know they're going to be blackballed. So now the average person, if you respect the wrong person, for Ahlul Islam, our role model is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best example. Our examples are the Sahaba, was Salihun, the Prophets and the Messengers. But if your role model is a football player, if your role model is a rapper, when their money is threatened, they're liable to say anything. Look what they done to that football player. I can't remember who he was when he, you know, I think he opposed China. Wallahu alam. Look what they tried to do to him. I don't, I don't know his name. It's not. I just want to make the point. <laughs> I don't know his name. Now, and I don't know what he's upon. I'm just making the point that there's a level of intimidation, and those people they won't stand up for it because. At the end of the day, they're an actor because they want money, right? They're a singer because they want money. They're a rapper because they want money. And look at the message. You know, they're calling people to the hellfire. They're glorifying fornication. They're glorifying drugs. They're glorifying knife crime. That's why anyone who's in the music industry and they glorify these things, and then they're on the television talking about knife crime, they're a hypocrite. I'm not meant to listen to you. And you're talking about going around the corner and stabbing somebody or the glorification of selling drugs. But you're a freedom fighter in your spare time. It's a joke. <laughs> You're the epidemic, that you're the one. You are the very cause of the youth on the street selling drugs because you glorified that life. Why didn't you grow up glorify going to school and getting an education and trying to fear Allah Azza wa and staying away from, but they won't because it's immorality, it's a tool of the shaitan. Allah can be said, Ikhwan, Barakallahu feekum. Allah Azza wa pardon us for any shortcomings. May Allah Azza wa bless Ahl al-Islam and protect the Muslims. And we ask Allah Azza to bless from amongst the youth and bless from amongst the brothers and the sisters, people who will carry this religion and defend it. And that's why we had the supplication, Make us leaders for the believers, for the people of piety, 
So, you know, nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong asking Allah to make me from the, the heads of piety or a leader for the people of piety because you want to be a, a role model for the people of good. You don't care what anyone else thinks about you except for Ahl al-Taqwa or Ahl al-Istiqam. Allah will grant us all success. If I said anything that was incorrect, then it's from myself and from the shaitan. And if I said anything that was correct, it was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa jazakumullah khairan. Any questions or comments or corrections with regards to anything that was said, barakallahu feekum. Should we advise someone who believes in prioritizing the rights of the people over the rights of Allah and Zawajal because they say Allah is all forgiving that the people will take their rights? The way to advise someone who holds something like this is that first of all we establish that we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will khaliqu that Allah is the creator, he is the sustainer, he is the one who controls all affairs and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has beautiful names and perfect attributes from the names of Allah as we mentioned in our talk, brief talk is Al-Hakim, the all-wise and Allah is the all-wise as it relates to the way that he created the creation and he is the all-wise as it relates to his laws and his legislation. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Hakim. As we mentioned, The religion is built upon weighing the harms against the benefits. And we give precedence to what? And precedence is given to what is in the overall benef benefit of mankind. As we said, alhamdulillah, explaining that briefly, that Allah subhanahu legislates things that are beneficial to mankind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the one that legislates, He is the one that commands, He is the one that prohibits. insanu suda. Do mankind believe that they will be left and they are not commanded nor are they prohibited? So if we believe in Allah Azawajal, then we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is to be obeyed. And we believe that the commands of Allah Azawajal, they are to be followed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَمَا كَانَ لِمُؤْمِنٍ وَلَا مُؤْمِنَةٍ إِذَا قَضَى اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ أَمْرًا أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُمَ الْخِيَرَةُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِمْ It is not for a believing man nor a believing woman once Allah and His Messenger decide a matter that they have any choice in that affair. Allah knows best. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ if somebody believes in Allah, then they have to believe Allah knows and you know not. If somebody believes in Allah, then they have to believe that perhaps as a human being, we will like things and they're harmful for us, as Allah mentions in the Quran, and we will hate things and those things are beneficial for us. If we believe in Allah, then we have to believe that Allah is the all-knowing. And as a human being, a creative being, our knowledge is very limited. And look, Ikhwan, that's why no matter how intelligent a person is, no matter where they study, no matter who they studied with, no matter what university they went to, no matter how many books they read, opinions, a person's opinion is based upon what? The level of their knowledge, also the level of their experience, and likewise it's based upon the environment and upbringing. I think we would all agree upon that. What's the oldest person according to the Guinness Book of Records? I don't know. Anybody know? 120 years of age. If somebody lived 120 years, still, they would have a limited amount of knowledge, a limited amount of experience, 
and they would still be affected by the society that they were raised in. Their upbringing. Some people, they suffer from traumas. You know, they, they have traumas that they encounter in their life that affects their outlook when they become older. That's Sunnah Allah fi khalqi. So regardless of how intelligent a person is, they will never be able to make every decision correctly and they will never be able to understand what is in the benefits of the whole of mankind because they're in a limited sphere. Allah Azawajal, however, is our creator. We believe as a Muslim that Allah Azawajal subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what is beneficial for us and He knows what is harmful for us. So my ability and my understanding is limited. Again, that's why we said this matter of what we spoke about in relation to Tawheed because if a person says, no, you know what? This is what law that is mentioned in the Quran. I don't accept it. I reject it because in reality, this is better than it. Well, that's this belief because you're saying your ruling and judgment is better than the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Um, what's your advice? What's the best way to explain to them, the Mus uh, to the general Muslim or even non-Muslims in university? They ask you, why do you distinguish yourself from your university's Islamic society? Because most of them are equine or political in nature. Because they're like, oh, why, why are you practicing Muslim? Why are you a practicing Muslim? But you are not affiliating yourself with the Islamic society. Why are you not with them, etc. I mean. <laughs> I would have preferred for the question to be on topic, but love us, I'll answer it, inshallah ta'ala. Now, <coughs> the brother asked, with regards to many of the Islamic societies in university, you find that many of them are politically orientated and they have some serious errors, so a person may ask, why do you distance yourself from the Islamic society and not partake in their activities and so on and so forth. The reality is, Ikhwan, if we look again, and I say this from experience, not based upon second-hand information, if you look at many of these organizations, they are based upon partisanship to opinions and methodologies that Allah revealed no legislation for. To the extent that if you oppose them, in a matter that, alhamdulillah, you are upon that which is correct and they are upon that which is false, they will never afford you the opportunity to actually educate and teach the people. And many times, sadly, these societies, they are not interested in educating the Muslims about their religion. Rather, they want anashid parties. They want to sing along, right? Or they have comedians come in. Or the like of these type of events. However, Ahl al-Sunnah, we say, we want to educate our brothers and our sisters. Alhamdulillah, people can enjoy themselves as long as it's lawful. And uh, you, you don't need me to, you know, play football in the park, do you? Or to have some lawful recreation. But when we get together, let's learn our religion. They don't want that many times. They want entertainment. So in that type of situation, a person, Alhamdulillah, I want to learn my religion. I want to be around people that want to learn their religion. I want to be around people that are trying to learn about the Islamic belief and the importance of following the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. Those who stay away from innovation and shirk and ma'asi. Many times you'll find that they will ostracize, they will warn against you. And somebody may say, well, how do we interact with them? Still, Alhamdulillah, the common people, we still give them we give them that way, you give them, for example, whether it's lectures or literature and so on and so forth. The general Muslims, we still interact with them. We still interact with the general Muslims. Say, for example, there's a Muslim, he's an army, he's a common person, and Alhamdulillah, he's in my class. He's an army, he doesn't know anything, he doesn't call, he's not a caller. I don't say, you know, I'm talking to you. He gives me salams, I turn my face. If he's an army, a common person, Alhamdulillah, give him a, a, a lecture. Take him to the masjid, if you can teach him Qur'an. Sometimes, alhamdulillah, the people of the sunnah, you might have a brother, he's a hafid. Alhamdulillah, I'm able to, I, I teach Qur'an. Sit him down, teach him sunnah, teach him 40 hadith. And alhamdulillah, that person, bi'indillahi ta'ala, if it's a person that is sincere, and Allah Azza grants them success, uh, success to accept the truth, you will see the change. But with regards to the Islamic society, if they're doing something that is bid'ah, we don't uh, cooperate upon that. If they're doing something that's ma'asir, we don't cooperate upon that. 
And at the same time, normally they're not interested in any type of... Sheikh Mubi used to say, he said, that, he said, the one thing we find common amongst many of them, you see that all of them, all of them, regardless of them claiming that they want cooperation, they in reality, they want against the people of the Sunnah, which is true. And it's the same with regards to ISOX and other people. Somebody said, as alaykum wa rahmatullah. As you mentioned, we should teach our children about the reality of hyper or neoliberalism and how it is a religion. Could you recommend any books which we can teach from? I mean, our brother, Sheikh Amjad Rafiq, Habibullah Ta'ala, if you look at his websites, in reality, again, you know a person through their fruits and their efforts. He has, I think, what's atheism? dot com, dot net, those type of websites, alhamdulillah. He has a number of resources that deal with a lot of the common shubahat, doubts that are out there. Jazakum Allah khairan. Um, I would advise the brothers and the sisters to benefit from that. Also, maybe in the lectures that are coming, you know, whether here and other masajid, maybe a brother can go into more detail and explain it even better than I have now talking about this idea of neoliberalism and how it is a religion and the dangers involved in it. Maybe, alhamdulillah, the brothers can ask some of the mashayikh to write maybe a book concerning it. I mean, alhamdulillah, in the Arab world, well, alhamd as well, the scholars, alhamdulillah, have addressed this. In the Arab world, it's known as a liberalia, liberalism. Many of the senior scholars, Sheikh Saleh al fawzan and other than them, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Habidahumullah ta'ala, and other than them have addressed it because they realize the danger of these type of movements. <coughs> Naam. <coughs> if it's related to the talk, <coughs> related to the topic. Because many of the questions, I'll be honest with you, when people are asking, Sa'af, if it's Sa'af, at the end of the day, there's you know, numerous questions. It's ridiculous. We're talking about the battle between Iman and Kufr, and they want to take us down a road that is ridiculous. <laughs> now, and if it's related to that, the, well, these questions, I tell you, at the end of the day, those who want to be upon anarchy and chaos, let them go ahead, ignore them. Ignore them, Nihayin. Said if they said it, I do not see anything that is more powerful than ignoring them as sweet. Because what do they have? People of anarchy, al arwah the mujannada. The souls are like a recruited army. Somebody who's an anarchist and they just want chaos, they will be with people like that. Let them go and be in chaos with one another. But you keep turning to them, we make them something that's important. Barakallahu feekum. I'm just saying that from some of the questions that are here, you know, there's no benefit. Barakallahu feekum. There's real issues that we need to address. There's real core issues. And there are battles taking place in the world that the people of the Sunnah, they need to be vocal with regards to them. You know, and if we focus on these foolish affairs, you know, issues where individuals have invented for their own, you know, masalih benefits, it's going to sidetrack us. Let them say what they say. Let them write what they write. Barakallahu people. As they say, the barking, the barking dogs do not affect the movement of the caravans, right? Zakhmullah khair. I used to tell, I said to the brothers, another example, below us is sewers, yeah? We're not worried about the rats, are we? When you don't wake up and say, oh, what are the rats doing today? <laughs> oh, I wonder what they do. That's why social media, so what? What they say, people say Twitter, or look what they said today, so what? You don't have anything better to do than send me something that somebody said about me on Twitter. Send me an ayah, hadith, that's the feed. We're getting closer to the grave. 41 years of age, send me something to benefit my soul. I don't care what they say, so what? If it's true, inshallah, hopefully I accept the hap. If it's false, they have to deal with the Yom Al-Qiyah. Those individuals need khadlihim, barakallahu fiqh. Alhamdulillah, ikhwan, the mas'uliyah, the responsibility upon the people of the Sunni is great. Let's focus upon learning and promoting and disseminating this knowledge. Your relevance is not through me or anybody else. It's through you adhering to the deen of Allah Azza wa If you are sincere and you hold on to the haqq, Allah will raise you no matter what anyone else says about you. That's a promise from Allah Azza wa Don't worry about the human beings. Habidukum Allah. No, it's not about the, that, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is the advice if you want to pursue a Islam? And another Muslim say we don't believe him, we don't accept that Muslim because you maybe you know him not understand you or something like that. I mean, if somebody accepts Islam, so what is seen about these people? 
I mean, if somebody says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the messenger of Allah, and alhamdulillah, bahiran, you know, that which is apparent is that they are Muslim, we accept it from them. If the Sabbath Islam will be yaqeen, then there will be shak. If somebody's Islam is established with certainty, it's not removed by doubt. All we have is what is apparent. We leave their heart, that is between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's dangerous. If somebody says, you know, he, a person accepts Islam and they say, you know what, I don't really believe that they're Muslim. And if a person says that that person is not Muslim, whoever says about their brother that they are oh, disbeliever, then he returns back to one of them. May Allah protect us from that. So I would advise the brothers, be very cautious. Some day, alhamdulillah, they embrace Islam. Alhamdulillah, they embrace Islam. Obviously, there are things that will nullify a person's Islam as well. So if somebody say, you know, I embrace Islam, but then they abuse Allah Azza wa Jalla, they insult Allah, they insult the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, now that person is not a Muslim. But because it's, it's beginning, you know, just one day accept, and I inform another brother, you accept Islam, then say, we don't believe him drinking alcohol. And, but no, say, that's, this is, yeah, that's a mistake, listen. At the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, a person, embraces Islam by saying Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah when the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said Mu'ad he said uh, to Yemen he said inna ka taqdam ala qawmi min ahli al-kitab you are going to a people from the people of the book let the first thing you call them to is la ilaha illallah if they accept that then inform them that Allah azza wa jalla has prescribed for them five daily prayers you know five prayers during their day and their night to the end of the hadith if they accept that then tell them that Allah azza wa jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed from them for them uh, as zakat to the end of the hadith the meaning of the hadith some, we only have what's apparent. Sins, al-ma'asi, uh, shirk. Sins, disobedience, that are lesser than shirk, like drinking alcohol. That doesn't remove somebody from the fold of Islam. That doesn't take somebody outside the fold of Islam. If I say that somebody is not a Muslim because they drink khamar, that's the methodology of the khawari. Because the point is, I mean, can't say to him, don't stop alcohol straight away. But no, no, we can't. That's a, that's a mistake. We can't. We can say to him, see that, see again, when we give da'wah, it has to be based upon knowledge. Because you can't say that what you just said is a mistake. Even the, the, there's two mistakes here. The, the one mistake is the, of the people that say that because he, after embracing Islam, he's not a Muslim because he drinks alcohol. That's the methodology of the khawari. But at the same time, the mistake that you just mentioned, we can't tell him that you can't drink alcohol. Yes, we can't tell him. We can say to him, Alcohol is haram. Naam. Alcohol is forbidden for you. But at the same time, yes, if it's difficult for him, we still advise him. You know, we take his situation into consideration. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they brought the individual to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, look, this shows us, Ikhwan, the ilm. Even when you deal with people, you have to have knowledge. How do I deal with the person correctly? Because there's one of two extremes. You can either, there's one of, you can either go to extremes like the Khawari, or you fall into the extremes of negligence like the Murjia. I had a sunnah upon a balance way. When they brought the, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when they brought the individual to the Prophet ﷺ who was drinking, now some of the companions, Ridwan Allah they started to curse him. The Prophet ﷺ said, do not curse him. Do not aid the shaitan against your brother. Do not aid the devil against your brother. This individual, because he was drinking, yes, he was punished. So look, you can't say yes, continue to drink. No, that's a khata, that's a mistake. He was punished at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But at the same time, after that, they were instructed and taught to make dua for him. May Allah, you, may Allah guide that person. May Allah rectify his affair and so on and so forth. So you see our position is balanced. That's what the Prophet ﷺ taught us. We don't go to the extremes of the khawarij or you drink alcohol, you're not a Muslim. That's takfir. But at the same time, we don't go to the other way of irja. No, continue to drink alcohol. No, we say to him, Alcohol is haram, it's forbidden in the religion of Islam. Intoxicants are haram. Marijuana, whether it's cocaine or anything else, haram in the religion. As a new Muslim, you know that Iman increases and it decreases. Iman increases and decreases. So you know a new Muslim, he needs assistance, right? So we know that, we, inshallah, we have wisdom, we have understanding, ta'ala, the way that we deal with people. We know that he's accepted at Islam. But Islam, he has to acquire knowledge. He has, to, he has to learn about the religion. He has to do things that will cause his iman to increase. So yes, 
him drinking, I'm going to say, you know what, you shouldn't drink. It's detrimental for your health. It's detrimental for your akhirah. But at the same time, I'm going to try and give him da'wah and stay in contact with him and so on and so forth. Like Sheikh Ibn al said, Sheikh Ibn al said, when you have new Muslims, he said, Alhamdulillah, when they accept that Islam, sometimes, you know, unfortunately, you know, when, when somebody embraces Islam and you, you see them, they film it, and then some aside, you will iyadu billah, Allahu Akbar, you know, and then afterwards, khalas, the cameras go away, he's left to the walls. That's a khata, that's a mistake. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, no doubt, it's a blood as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Ayah di Allah bika rajulan wahida, khayran laka min humarin na'am. That if Allah has with your guides through you, one person is better than the red camel, meaning any worldly possession, right? So Alhamdulillah, yes, if you give da'wah and you're sincere, and somebody accepts Islam through your da'wah, your reward is great, by the will of Allah. But still there's work to be done. Stay in contact with them. You give them money, gifts, hadaya. Not like, oh, why do we, some people, why do we have to treat them special? <laughs> Man might have no family, you know, no support network. That's why in our masajid, that's why I say with foolishness, we don't have time. There should be a group of brothers or a group of sisters, a committee, that their responsibility is to take care of the new Muslims. That's their job. So alhamdulillah, they have a list of new Muslims. You know, their responsibility, they call the brother. I'm going to the masjid, you coming? There's a lesson, you coming? Sisters with the sisters, the brothers with the brothers. Imagine the fruits of the da'wah if we all took that on. And I need one advice. He is a Romanian, and I tried to find him in Romania, but he no exists. Alhamdulillah, fattakullah, mustata'ala. No understand English as well. Do what you can, alhamdulillah. La yukallifu Allah nasan illa wasa'ala. Allah doesn't overburden us all more than he can do. But there's many things that we need to establish. as shahi All of us. Things that to improve our communities and to help our communities grow, all of us need to establish things. And if we focus focused upon things that are beneficial, imagine the fruits. Barakallah <laughs> feekum. Next talk is 10 past 5. Habidukumullah, Jazakumullah khair and Mubarakallah feekum. And again, may Allah bless the brothers and the sisters for their, their patience. And likewise, Alhamdulillah, their, their cooperation to see the like of these gatherings. No doubt, Alhamdulillah, brings joy to the hearts of the people. Alhamdulillah, to see, you know, the cooperation upon good. Alhamdulillah, wa Jazakumullah khair. May Allah grant us all tawfiq. Subhanallah, wa alhamdulillah, shalom, la ilaha illa anti, astaghfirullah wa tawfiq. Thank <laughs> you.